Today in the news, we say goodbye to an AMD staple, RDNA 3 got juiced up, and Raptor Lake looks better than ever. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. But first, let me thank Jawa for sponsoring today's news. Jawa is a marketplace where you can list or buy computer parts like motherboards, CPUs, and GPUs. They offer the lowest fees when compared to other places like eBay or Amazon. It's 3% for payment processing, 3.5% for platform fees, and it's capped at $50. So if you're selling, you can save hundreds in cash. You can also request whole desktop PCs from their verified sellers. You can take a look at this one, for example. They also sell notebooks and consoles, so visit jawa.gg now. The link is in the description down below. Let's get started with AMD. Back in 2017, the company really shook the industry with their Ryzen processors. They brought CPUs with performance that rivaled Intel's offerings in the mainstream while keeping the price relatively low for the time. I mean, back when the first Ryzen chips came up, Intel had their cap for their mainstream CPUs to four cores. If you wanted anything more, you had to jump into the HEDT platform, which costs a heck of a lot more. The 6900K, for example, which was Intel's eight core at the time, costs a whopping $1,100. Now, of course, Intel did counter pretty quickly and was able to stay competitive for a pretty long time, except when it came to their HEDT platform. The same year, AMD pulled up with their Threadripper lineup. The first generation was really impressive with up to 16 cores and 32 threads, all of that for $1,000. Second generation Threadripper, the then popped up in 2018 and boom, double the core count with up to 32 cores and 64 threads. And Intel's HEDT lineup was essentially dead in the water. The chip was pretty expensive at $1,800, but that felt like a steal at the time. Then third generation Threadripper came up and once again, double the cores at up to 64 cores and 128 threads for the 3990WX. Now with that third generation, AMD also introduced the Pro lineup of 30 per CPUs, a lineup that was only available through OEMs. Unfortunately, it looks like the Pro lineup killed the regular Threadripper. In a blog post by AMD last week, the company said that they would unify both lineups to just Threadripper Pro, and the pricing was just released for these models. It's rough. If we compare it to the 3000 series of Threadrippers, 24 cores was $1,400. That's the 3960X. Now with the Pro models, it's $2,400. Want a 32 core? Well, last generation it was $2,000 and now it's $3,300. How about the massive 64 core then? It used to be $3,990. Well, now it's $6,500. Basically, you're paying just below the price of an Epic CPU. I mean, technically, some Epic CPUs that have 64 cores are even cheaper than the uh, Threadripper counterparts. Essentially, what AMD just did is kill their HEDT platform with server-like pricing. So what do you guys think? Am I wrong here? Do you think that these prices are actually reasonable? Let me know down below. Moving on, but sticking to AMD, it looks like RDNA 3 is gonna get juiced up. One of the major differences between NVIDIA and AMD gaming GPUs is the Tensor Cores, NVIDIA's dedicated AI acceleration hardware that's been there since the 2000 series. I mean, yeah, it was there before with the Volta architecture, but that wasn't a gaming card. Anyways, that's the uh, AI acceleration on the hardware level. That's the difference. Well, apparently, AMD is looking to change that. GFX 11, which is RDNA 3, will support WMMA or the Wave Matrix Multiply Accumulate Instruction Set. What does that mean? Well, before that, the only consumer GPU hardware that could run WMMA instructions was NVIDIA's Tensor Cores. But how does AMD achieve this? Are they going to have their own tensor cores in the silicon? Well, actually no, it's more of an API that helps break down matrix operations to execute them. More importantly though, it means that the RX 7000 series will likely support AI upscaling. Technically, it's not news since Intel's XCSS is an AI upscaler and it will be compatible with AMD GPUs, but still, FSR 3.0 might be what this is for. Moving on to some Intel news, we got another engineering sample for Raptor Lake, and it's 
looking good. A user on the Chip Hell forum called Lords recently got his hands on an ES3, basically a third iteration of the uh, engineering samples. This new ES is much faster than the ES1. ES1, which is one of the revisions of a 13900K, had a boost clock of 4.5 gigahertz all core. With that, it had a score of 611 points on CPUZ's single threaded and about 13,000 in the multi-threaded test. According to Lords, this ES3 though, boosts up to 5.5 gigahertz single core and 5.3 gigahertz all core, which he says gives it a score of 880 points in single threaded and around 15,000 in multi-core. Now we do have proof that Lords has an ES1, but unfortunately we're uh, taking his word on the ES3 scores. All in all though, it looks like Intel is making some fast progress on their next generation of CPUs. At 880 points in this single threaded test, it's about 33% faster than the fastest AMD chip, the 5950X, and it's around 20-ish percent faster in the multi-core score than the 5950X. With AMD saying that Zen 4 has a 15% increase in single threaded performance compared to Zen 3, it's gonna be a tough fight for the red team. Anyways guys, that is pretty much it for today's catch up. Don't forget to check out Jawa.gg, our sponsor for today's episode. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you wanna talk about today's stories, as usual, right here. To see the latest video, right here. To subscribe to the channel, stay frosty my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Y'all tried the beebs brew? Rolling them dice, I love it, I love it, I'm fine.